Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel and also my first ever YouTube video. In this video, I want to show you how you can create face-centered cubic or FCC nanoparticles in Blender using free asset that I've made available on Gumroad. To get started, you'll need to have installed Blender version 3.4 or higher, and of course, the asset. Links to download both can be found in the description box below. This tutorial on using the nanoparticle has two parts. The first half consists of a basic walkthrough of the nanoparticle asset. The asset has been made using geometry nodes and is procedural. It has a bunch of useful control parameters to help you customize the nanoparticle. If you don't have much experience using geometry nodes, don't worry, you should be able to take the asset with the available controls and run with it immediately. In the second half, we'll put the nanoparticle into a really basic scene, which might be useful for things like title slides for presentations. With that said, let's jump into it. After opening the blend file for the asset, you'll find a nanoparticle in a simple scene consisting of a backdrop, a single aerial light, and the camera. In this walkthrough, I will be using the Cycles render engine, but this asset will work equally well with Eevee. To get started, click on the nanoparticle and come over to the Modifier Properties tab. Here you will find the geometry node setup named the FCC nanoparticle generator. Let's have a look at the settings. Right at the top, you will see two tick boxes for spherical nanoparticles and mesh atoms. These two options will make more sense with some of the other settings, so let's come back to these. If you are using Blender version 3.4, these two might appear as a boolean box with a 0 or 1 input rather than tick boxes, but they do the same thing. Directly below, we have the domain size to control the overall size of the nanoparticle. This setting dictates the bounds of the nanoparticles, and so it doesn't scale the atoms with it. To change the atom size, come to the Atom Diameter setting. Below that, we have Mesh Atom Resolution, which is used together with the Mesh Atoms option above. This asset accommodates two types of geometry to represent atoms. With Mesh Atoms disabled, atoms are represented with point clouds. This allows atoms to be rendered as spheres of infinite resolution without adding crazy amounts of geometry to the scene. The downside of this option is that it only works in the Cycles render engine, and second, atoms don't show as spheres in the solid viewport view. Alternatively, you can enable mesh atoms. This swaps point cloud atoms for real mesh atoms using icospheres. This option makes the nanoparticles compatible with Eevee, and the atoms will show as spheres under the solid view of the viewport. The subdivision of the icospheres are controlled by mesh atom resolution. Be careful when increasing any of the domain size, atom diameter, and atom resolution settings as they can quickly add a lot of geometry to the scene and crash Blender. I have put in some inbuilt upper limits to each so that you can't infinitely increase them, however these are relative to my computer and might be different for yours. The next setting is the truncation level. With this set to zero, you have the nanoparticle in a cubic geometry with 100 crystallographic facets exposed on all sides. As you increase the truncation level, the nanoparticle gets truncated from its eight vertices to create 111 facets. By toggling this option, you can access many of the truncated geometries for a single crystal FCC nanoparticle. Slice location allows you to have the nanoparticle sliced open to show what's happening inside. The slicing plane lies in the YZ plane, and this setting simply controls where along the x-axis this plane lies. This option is useful if you have a bimetallic phase, for example a core shell phase, and you want to show how this looks inside. The nanoparticle comes with five material options. One single phase material, named one phase, and four binary phase materials. Two phase core shelled creates a core shelled nanoparticle. The radius of the core phase can be controlled by toggling the inner radius core shelled option down below. Two phase Janus creates a Janus nanoparticle with the two phases split along the x axis. Two phase ordered creates a ordered composition where the atom type alternates every other lattice position. Finally, 
two-phase random creates a random distribution of the two atom types throughout the nanoparticle. You can control the relative proportion of each phase with the phase bias setting, as well as a seed value, which you can use to create other types of random distribution. By default, both phases have a dull, rough metal shader assigned to them, colored orange and blue. If you want to change these materials, come over to the shading tab. For the two-phase random, you see it is simply two principal BSDF shaders mixed together with an attribute node as control. This is the same principle for all of the two-phase shaders. To change the material of any phase, just change what gets plugged into the mix shader. Let's say I want one atom to have a shiny plastic look rather than a dull metal. I can maybe drop the metallic and reduce the roughness, and there you have it. Likewise, if I want one atom to be emissive, you could add a emission shader and plug that into the mix shader instead, and so on. The final two settings to touch are the spherical nanoparticle and disorder settings. Enabling spherical nanoparticle simply causes the nanoparticle to be truncated into a sphere rather than along specific crystallographic directions. The disorder level randomly displaces the atoms from their original locations to create an amorphous appearance. For completeness, it is worth mentioning that the geometry node setup assumes that the generator is applied to a cube mesh. You can see this by turning off the modifier's viewport visibility. So it doesn't work if you try to apply it to other types of mesh, like a sphere, a cuboid, and so on. That's it for the first part of the tutorial. Thanks very much for following along. I hope it was useful, and if it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like, comment down below, or even subscribe for more upcoming content. Follow the link on the screen or in the description box below for part 2. See you next time!